It means given a density, I have a unique view. So what Van Bagen Cohn then later showed is that given one density, so given a density, there is a unique V external. There cannot have two V external. That I have shown. Given a, a density cannot correspond to two V, v and V prime, two different external potential. So given a row, there is a unique V. A v essentially is a unique Hamiltonian. Because I told you, for n particle Hamiltonian, the only difference is external potential. Given this unique age, you have unique E0. So now, argument is that given a row, I have a unique ground state energy. But Weinberg and Cohn actually never proved that it can be derived. Weinberg and Cohn never said that the given a row, I will be able to derive E0. It only says it corresponds to a unique E0. And this is where I believe. The gap between the, our understanding of web function method that I showed you, that you hardly forget I'm not able to write in terms of density. I require row 2. I require odd diagonal part of density matrix, right? This is the gap, I think, understand. That row corresponds to a unique energy doesn't mean that the energy can be actually obtained from row. I may be wrong. I mean, this is, of course, most of the DFT people don't agree with me. Because they have they have been constructing functionals, and many of the functionals are very good. But many of the functionals are also empirical. And that's the reason they are very good. If you are putting experimental parameters, you get good results. Can it be ever found? I don't know. I believe no. Maybe this functional exists, it's a factor, who knows? What is this function? We don't know. But the Weinberg and never talked about it. So I, actually, there is a lot of discussion in Weinberg and Cohn theory, even today. This is HK1, there is HK2, which I'll come back tomorrow. But that is a minor part. This is the most <coughs> important part, that given a density, uh, you can get a, get a unique you know. The proof is actually too simple. And that was the problem. Eh? Many people actually said the proof is wrong. How can it be so? There must be some error. Some logical error. But the proof is absolutely an elegant proof, actually. It uses variational bound. That's all it uses. And because it is variational bound, it is only for ground state. I mean, that I have put mentioned. Or lowest state of the same symmetry. If you know the density belongs to that particular symmetry. Okay, that's an extensive approach. So this is an amazing theorem, actually. And you can go back, back, understand what does the unique mean, what does this correspondence mean, you can go and discuss a lot of things. But the fact is that he proved that given two V and V prime, you must have two row and row. Many people have argued, is the reverse true? Given A, V, can I have two row and row prime? And that's, of course, a nonsense question. Because if I given A, V, Hamiltonian is fixed. Can only have one density. <coughs> because your web function is single value. So many people ask me, what about the reverse? The reverse will never happen, anything. Because web function is a single value. So of course, there is density single value. So there is no problem. So I can't have two different density for a given V. But this was a question. Can two different V give you same density? That was not clear. And that is what Weinberg and Cohn claim now. But that's not possible. Does it mean DFT? <coughs> we discussed today. Does it still mean DFT? That's the question. And this is good. There is no problem with this theorem. Does it mean that energy can be written in terms of a function of a density? So what are the attempts that has been done? Of course, we saw that even for hartree fock exchange cannot be even today. So people did approximations, something called LDA. Because this row R, R1, R2 that I showed, the diagonal part of density matrix, 
is what was called non-local part because rho is not a function of r. So then that then came LDA, approximation to exchange. Then came improvement of LDA. Then came in some correlation function, and all that is going on. But underneath, the physics is still not clear. It can it be written? And of course, we know a lot of application in DFT. Like these three letters are more famous than anything in theoretical physics or chemistry today. Everybody understands these three letters, DFT. Whether they know density, they cannot write here for density. What is that density? But they know DFT. Experimentalists have told me disensitized solar cell, that their experiments have been vetted by DFT calculations. It's amazing. They said, no, no, my experiment is right. Look at the DFT calculations. Who will ever get the DFT calculations? I'll actually show a slide tomorrow of a simple enthalpy of energy. Reaction, simple chemical reaction. How does DFT do? You take your pick. But for the time being, DFT exists. There's no question. So I just want to go back and again reiterate to Van Bakkon here that if you have two different potentials, we showed that they must have two different densities. So that was the content of the number from here, that you cannot have the same density for two different potentials. Okay? And of course, if you have one potential, anyway you can't have two densities, because it's a single level function and so on. That is defined by some, some other reasons. But Wenberg and Cohn essentially showed that if I have V and V prime, then I must, each of them must belong to a different density, rho and rho prime. <coughs> and uh, the proof was by assuming that they belong to the same density and then showing that it leads to an absurdity. And the absurdity was shown by variation by okay. So I hope you remember that. So we can do the Hamiltonian for this using the work function of this. An expectation value of this Hamiltonian is the red function of this, and then if you add them up, you show that you reach a, if both densities are same, then you reach an identity that, uh, or inequality, that E0 plus E0 prime is greater than E0 plus E0, which is an absurdity. So that essentially shows that that cannot be So this is the modern DFT, beginning of modern DFT. In some sense that we can then interpret that that since a V and V prime corresponds to a particular H and H prime, from where I get V naught and V naught prime, then one can show that given a, a, a Hamiltonian, the energy is a unique function of the density. So I cannot have one density giving two energies. Just like because one I have shown that the one density cannot give you two V and V prime, which means it cannot give. So that is the meaning of the fact that the ground state energy is a unique function of density, and that has led to this following <coughs> interpretation that E naught is what is called now functional of rho. So all of you know what is a function now. So this is written in the square bracket. It's a function of functions. So those who do not know why the word function now. This is a function, density is a function of R, X, Y, Z I already showed, and energy is a function of the density. So it is called the functional of uh, the energy functional. So that is how the density functional, I defined already what is electron density, and now you can see why it is density functional, because energy is a functional of the density. And this is the meaning that this functional is unique function. So, if we want to write this, then energy has various components. So for each one, I will try to write it as a functional. So the first component is, of course, the kinetic energy. So I still don't know how to write. But let me say that if Weinberg and Cohn is right, are right, then the, then the kinetic energy part can be written as P of O. We have to see, can it be done? How can it be done? When can it be done? Then you have the external potential, just like here, these are external potential. So V, so let me call it V external, is also a function of 
And then the rest is electron electron repulsion, V, E, E, which also now can be written as a functional vector. So these are essentially the three components of the Hamiltonian. And if you remember, we said these two parts are, are sum of one dimension, one electron <coughs> operators. So H, these together, and this came from one by R H. So if you go back to the discussion of the ab initio theories, that came from one by R J, and these two came from the H, which is the one electron part, kinetic plus external potential, external to electrons. That's why it is called external. Because there is no electron electron repulsion, electrons are attracted by nuclei or atom, or there is an external field. That is the reason external potential is very important. We also said that this actually, in terms of the Hamiltonian, this part is very important because this distinguishes one system to another system. So everything else would be actually the same. So this actually led to a very famous term called the universal function. So if we understand that, then it says that the, the part P of rho plus V E E of rho should be universal for all systems of the same particle. So how do I, how do I now name the particle? That particle are simply said subject to the condition that the integral rho of r, d of r or dq of r is equal to n. So if I, so I said, what is the probability of density of finding an electron at this point? r is rho of r. If I integrate, that's the total number of electrons, which is capital. So this is a condition that I must apply in making any proof, making any further uh, progress with the DFT. Because if this is not there, then I can get some density which is totally meaningless. This is also shown from my definition of rho of r. So remember yesterday, I defined rho of r as n times integral psi star x, x2 to xn, psi x, x2 to xn, dx2, dx3, dxn, and d omega. Well, we remember the x is a composite of r omega. So I've integrated the spin part, so what remains is rho of r. Quite clearly, if I now integrate this uh, with the d cube of r or dr, then it means it's a full integration here, because now dr will come, and to the normalized wave function, that is 1, so that keeps only the capital N. So it's also easy to see from the definition that this must be satisfied. So when I'm making any progress of the DFT, the first part is to write energy as a function of, of density. Out of which I know that this, is a, this should be a universal functional. The external potential is what distinguishes one functional to another functional, provided the rho integrates to a specific number m. So when I, when I introduce that subject constraint, it means I'm talking of a specific n particle problem. I have already put integral rho of r and capital N. So given that, the only term that will actually change is the external potential. Okay? So all actually all difficult problems we will let us see are put in the universal function. What are really difficult to find out? This is much easy to calculate. That you have written there, first mathematical expression, yeah. e0 equals e0 as a function of rho. So that's the statement of uh, when by yeah. Yeah. the next line. Is it obvious that this must be true, or uh, because I can have a complicated dependence of e0 which I cannot break down into three linear? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Uh, and this is what I'm saying. Since the functional is not known, it's very hard to say what could be the complex structure. But there is a possibility of a complex structure. Uh, so the, stand, the simplest way was to look at the Hamiltonian because everybody thought this E0 must be derived from psi H psi. Mm -hmm. So then there are three terms. Each term they try to write in the function of objects. Right, but when you are already defining universal function, then ah. you are assuming this to be true. 
that you, you can break. Yeah. Down. So once I once I'm able to break, then only I can I can identify that this is the universe or not. I see. So, so we are not yet clear whether you can break, but if you I do know break, this is so very difficult to say. Okay. But see. this is the simplest way to think that every term of the energy is a unique function of density. But this is a very important point that you raise because it is possible that this is not an unique function of density. This is also not a unique function of density, right. but together it is. Right. Okay, it's very complex, but the, I think this is a term which people have speculated because it's very hard to progress. Mm -hmm. So in, during the progress, you assume that every single term of the Hamiltonian can be written in terms of unique as a unique function of density. In which case, I can say this is a universal function. And the external potential changes it. The external potential part, that is V external as a function of rho, can be written much more easily. Because V external, as I said, is a sum of one particle of R. Sum V of R. Now, when I say V of R, it could be, it's R is electronic coordinate. So these are electron nuclear <coughs> interactions. And when we are talking of molecules, of course, these are born oppenheimer molecules. So the nuclear fits. Of course, if it is not a born oppenheimer then it will have a further complication because you have to bring within the DFT nuclear motion. So this will, this will be a much more complex problem. So, so then, this is a V of Ri. And if you have external potential, that's also one particle external potential. Let's assume that entire, for n electrons, I can write this as a V of R. Then my web function, the, the energy psi of V external, psi, sorry, psi, can be written very easily as integral rho of R, V of R, V of R or VT of R. Again, please understand that interchangeably I'm writing VR or VQ of R, it doesn't matter. It's a three-dimensional volume element. This is very easy to show. And I, show, I showed that yesterday, that if you substitute this here, then you can see for each R1, R2 to Rn, given an R1, I can integrate the rest. Because the, the, the Hamiltonian does not contain R2 to Rn. So, yeah. So I can integrate the rest, and I will only have the R1 part remaining with the psi. So that is the integration that I am doing here. Then of course there is a V of R2, which will also bring in another psi star psi. That is automatically taken care because rho has a factor n. So the factor n will actually take care that we eventually get only rho. Otherwise for each term you get 1 by n integral rho of R V of R. So it is very easy. This integration is very easy to do for a one particle and you can actually write this as the energy function. And there is no doubt about that. That for this part, I can actually write very clearly what is the what is the functional. But kinetic energy is also a sum of single particle terms. No, because it is a Laplacian. L squared. It is a Laplacian. You can do two partial integrals and then. Uh, yeah, the Laplacian. So I cannot write as an integral rho of our Laplacian. Yeah, but you so, can do two partial integrals and neglect the boundary or something. Yeah, that we can do. But in practice, if you write in exact principle, it should be, as we wrote yesterday, of diagonal part of gamma, x1, x1 prime. So P, uh, the del will couple the octane. Yes. Yeah. So because when you are taking one yeah. so, so actually it is a one particle density metric, so not density. So because, okay, what we discussed yesterday, yeah. it's not simply writable in terms of rho. And that is actually the bottom line. So this is what I was trying to tell, that the real problem of DFT, and that is why the Konsham theory will now be put in context, is to actually write this. In fact, many, many have speculated that if you can find and